As a kid, I loved 4D movies. You may remember the ones, I think Disney is probably the start of this idea, but they're the movies that activate all of your senses. If there's something kind of smelly in the movie, then the theater would fill with that scent. If there was water, a mist would fall. Experiences that ignite all our senses are more memorable and honestly more fun. So this summer, let's work together to create an immersive experience for your kids to help activate their creativity, imagination, and fun. Welcome back to the Inspire to Enrich podcast. I'm Kaylee Collier. I'm a teacher, mom, wife, and creativity advocate. Today, we are diving into creativity weeks. While I sip on a very simple water with mango peach mio. I'm working on getting my health back on track since it's summer vacation and I have a little bit more time to myself and I can eat and drink as I please. So we're working with the water today. So let's talk about themed learning. If you're a teacher, you probably already do something like this in the classroom, but having a theme that kind of encompasses what you're going to be learning for the day or the week or the month, not only makes it super easy to plan, but also makes it really fun for the kids and for yourself. Personally, I love the challenge of finding the perfect pieces to fit with a theme. I think about it like creating a fun birthday party or something where I'm looking for the most nuanced piece and the most obvious piece. So here's the outline that I've used this last week with my own child, who is three, um, but we decided to have Mermaid Week. So this is the outline that I created that you could use with any theme. First, find a book. So a book or some type of text is really important because that's going to be the anchor. Of course, as a teacher, I know the importance of summer literacy. There's tons of studies that show that students slide, the inevitable summer slide does happen, especially when students are not given the opportunities to explore and to read and to write over the summer. So finding a book at the library or on your shelf or through a digital outlet like digital books or YouTube read alouds is a really easy way to anchor everything that you do in your themed week. Sometimes it also helps to enjoy a really good story while you're trying to spark that creativity. For younger kids, and even for some of us adults who are not in tune with our creative sides, finding that inspiration can be really overwhelming. So having a book as the anchor gives you a place to start. The second thing that we wanted to do was a craft. I love crafts. I grew up with a mama who was a craft queen um, and she takes care of my child during the week. God bless her. And they do tons of crafts. My daughter just finished up a dance camp where they got to do crafts. So we love some crafting. I'm also a big fan of glitter. I know that's a polarizing statement. Some people are anti-glitter and some people are all for it. I personally love it. Bring on the sparkle. So For craft, you want to find something that's hands-on and fun that fits with the week's theme. It could be as simple as creating your own painting um, or going outside and doing something with sidewalk chalk. Crafts are open-ended. Next, we came up with a snack. Now, like I said, I have a toddler. She's three. And we are very much into the Um, the toddler stage where they don't want to eat anything. If it was not for oat pies and fruit snacks, I'm not sure my child would eat anything during the day. So we came up with a fun snack that is a Rice Krispie treat. You know, simple is what we created this week, but who doesn't love a themed snack? So enjoying a yummy treat um, or maybe, fingers crossed, introducing new foods, this is a great way to do that within the week. And getting kids in the kitchen, helping you cook or make something is a great way to help them take ownership in what they're eating and how it's fueling their bodies and their activities. Also, writing is a big part of our outline. Now, 
For younger kids, writing could be something as simple as drawing a picture and then telling you about what they drew. That is the very first stages of writing. For older students or for older children, this might look like paragraphs or short stories or poems. It doesn't matter what the writing or drawing is per se. What's important is that they're processing information and it's a great way to practice new language skills. Number five in our outline is STEAM. I love a good STEM slash STEAM project. So working to solve a problem using science, technology, engineering, art, and math is always a win-win in my book. And then finally, I rounded out the week with an outing. We tried to think of a fun local place to go that would tie into the week's theme. There's nothing better for creativity than getting outside. And the best part about this is it doesn't have to cost anything. All you need is a little imagination and creativity on your part. Or get your kids involved. Ask them where they would want to go that would kind of match with the theme that they have for the week. So let's talk about week one, our mermaid theme. Okay, so we are getting ready to head off on vacation. Not been to the beach in a couple of years. And to get my child excited about the beach, we are watching The Little Mermaid and reading books about the beach, talking about what it was like the last time that she went. She was only a year old. Um, we're talking about the importance of sunscreen and water safety and learning how to swim. So I thought a fun thing would be to have a mermaid week. And she's very into mermaids right now. She has these little plastic mermaids that go with us everywhere and she pretends to swim with them. So that's kind of where the idea of mermaid week came from. Feel free to take this week and do exactly what I did or twist it, turn it, however uh, would work for you and your family. So we started off with a book. So if you have older kids, you might want to explore in the original version of The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. The OG version is a little dark, uh, but it would be a great way to practice compare and contrast skills with kids. It's also probably going to pull their interest a little bit more, um, especially if your older kids are not really into mermaids. Uh, the older version, since it is a little on the darker, kind of spooky side, in my opinion, um, it may pull in their interest a little bit more than, say, the Disney movie, The Little Mermaid. Of course, any book about a mermaid would be perfect, but you could also explore nonfiction titles about sea creatures or sea habitats. We picked three books at our local library. Um, so the first book is Sandcastle by Brenda Shannon Yee. And this is a really cute book about a group of kids who meet on a beach. And each child comes up to kind of the main character. Her name is Jen, and she's building a sandcastle. And as each child comes up to ask if they can play with her, she says, well, this is my sandcastle. And then the child offers something that they could contribute, like a moat or a path or a wall. So by the end of the story, you have a group of very diverse children working together to build this giant sandcastle with all the details. And then there's a little surprise at the end that I thought was very clever. So that was a really fun read for us. We also picked up the book called Hello Ocean by Pam Munez Ryan. So this book, the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. It's illustrated by Mark Australia, and they are so beautiful. They look like photographs. Um, but in the book, we talk about the five senses. So of course, this book is geared towards a younger group. Um, but you could use this with older kids too because the illustrations are so beautiful. But throughout the book, the girl that's at the beach talks about how the beach is interacting with her five senses. And then the last book that we got was a really fun read. Um, it's called Pirate Girl by Cornelia Funk. I 
think is how you say her name. It's F-U-N-K-E. Um, but Pirate Girl is about a girl named Molly who is on uh, a quest to visit her grandmother. And she's on her sailboat and she comes across some pirates. And I don't want to spoil it, um, but let's just say Molly is uh, quite a pistol. And I like her little personality. She does not take any crap from these pirates. So those are the books that we picked out for our week. Next, we did a craft. So we love the dollar store, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, all of the inexpensive dollar places. That's our jam, especially because my three-year-old is learning about money. So it's very easy for me to give her a dollar or two and let her pick out something and then go and pay for it herself. So while we were at the Dollar Tree, we found these really cute wood cutouts of mermaid tails. Grab several of them. We've been painting them, adding glitter, because you can't have a mermaid tail without glitter. And we've created adorable little door hangers with our little mermaid tails. These would also make cute ornaments for Christmas. Um, and they're thin enough that if you wanted to, you could use these as a bookmark for like a thicker novel. Um, so if you have a Dollar Tree near you, head over there and see if you can find them. They were not in the craft section. They were with all the summer stuff. Just a heads up. All right, so our snack. I love a good snack. And that's basically what my child lives off of. My husband cannot eat gluten. So he had requested Rice Krispie treats. He wanted the, uh, the prepackaged kind. And I figured, why not make homemade Rice Krispie treats because they're just better. So we went to the store, we got all of the ingredients to make Rice Krispie treats, which is fairly inexpensive. Um, you can get the off-brand Rice Krispies or any other cereal that you like. And marshmallows, off-brand marshmallows work fine. So you can make good Rice Krispie treats for less than you can buy the box. And then we found some really pretty sprinkles. We got a pack of unicorn sprinkles. Now, if you're wanting fancy sprinkles and you're wanting to save money, I do suggest going to baking store or maybe Michael's um, or even Hobby Lobby if you have one because the sprinkles at Kroger are marked up for convenience. So we got some colorful sprinkles and some white chocolate that was on sale and drizzled that onto the Rice Krispie treats and then dusted on some blue sugar was so beautiful, so delicious, and my child did not eat any of them. So me and the hubs have been snacking on Rice Krispie treats all week, and they are fantastic. <laughs> um, so for writing, I always go with a good writing prompt. I feel like if you're stuck with what to write about, offering up a writing prompt of would you rather or adjust the story, those are two simple prompts that apply to almost anything. So you could do, would you rather be a sea turtle or a jellyfish? Would you rather be a mermaid in the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean? A sea turtle or a jellyfish? Would you rather be a mermaid in the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean. You could also rewrite The Little Mermaid from the perspective of another character. So again, in the Disney version, she has a lot of sisters at the very beginning, but then we never hear from them again. You could do a story from one of their perspectives. You could also do a story from Flounder or Sebastian's perspectives. But both of those would be quick, easy writing prompts that you could work on all week. So none of these things have to be done in one day. I picked six things in our outline in case you wanted to do them over the course of a week. And so each day you could do one thing, but of course you make it fit your schedule. So, so far we've talked about a book or three books, a craft idea, a snack, and some writing prompts. Next is the STEAM activity. So I went ahead and came up with a problem. And our problem was we're at the beach and we found all of these gorgeous seashells. We want to take them home, but we don't have anything to carry them in because we've been walking around in our bathing suits and bare feet and we don't have anything to use to get all of these beautiful large seashells back home. We noticed some trash lying on the beach. 
is there a way that we could create a container out of that trash so that we can get our shells home and clean the beach at the same time? So this is something that you could do with recyclable materials, um, or you could go around the neighborhood and find trash. Of course, you might want to put on gloves or something like that, um, but you could do almost like a project with this. So cleaning up an area and creating something new using recyclables would be easy and fun. You could also use things found in nature. So that's a fun, sustainable way to do a STEM project, to go out and find items in nature that you can use to create whatever it is that you're solving the problem with. So the container in this case, and then afterwards you just deconstruct it. Our last thing is the outing. So the easiest outing for a mermaid week was going to the local splash pad because it's water, right? Mermaids love water. I love water. My child loves water. So we went to the splash pad at our local park. We met some friends there. We had some snacks. It's always so much fun. And it's not as hot as sitting at the park. There's nothing worse as a mama than going to the park and sweating to death as my child begs to be pushed on the swing because it's a beautiful breeze. So the splash pad is always a win for me. Um, but you can also go old school and set up a sprinkler in the backyard. Or if you want to conserve water, if you're in a different place, maybe water, um, you're on a conservation um, rotation, I guess is what you would call it. So if you're wanting to conserve water, you could you know, use something that would be fake water, like some kind of uh, blue dyed rice to play with. You could go somewhere else in your area, like maybe the aquarium, you go check out some animals. Um, you could go to a local lake or river or ocean if you're lucky enough to live by the ocean. So any of those would be an easy outing to match your mermaid theme or ocean theme, depending on your kids and what they're wanting to do. So that was what we did this last week for our creativity themed learning week with mermaids. We read three books that were super fun, got us excited for the beach. We crafted adorable mermaid tails that are hanging on our doors, ate the most delicious mermaid themed Rice Krispie Treats. We wrote about, would we rather be a mermaid in the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean? Personally, I'm picking the Gulf, but I like the water there. Uh, we did our STEM project where we created a container out of recyclable materials. And then we spent a couple of days at the splash pad, having fun, meeting other kids and cooling off from this hot, hot, hot Georgia summer. So I hope that you and your family are having a wonderful summer if you're on summer vacation. If you're not, it's coming, it's close. And next week, I will be back with our week two of our creativity themed weeks. Week two is going to be garden week. I let my child decide if we were going to do garden or space and she wants to do garden. So next week I'll have some books, crafts, all that great stuff, all about gardens and plants, fruits and vegetables, and getting your fingers dirty. So I hope that you have a wonderful week. Take care.